So now let's move on to the next classical concept. So we've already looked at Dobriner's triads, how they worked, okay, and how ultimately they failed because of a drawback that not all elements could be arranged into triads, that is groups of three. So now we're going to move on to the next concept which was developed, and that was called Newland's Law of Octaves. Newland's Law of Octaves, right? So Newlands, okay, Newlands, John Newlands was a chemist, an English chemist, British chemist, who was fascinated and really interested in finding a method to be able to group elements, right? So he came up with the law of octaves. Now octave, the word octave is basically a group of eight. And it basically refers to the eight notes, eight notes of the eight or actually not eight notes. It refers to the musical notes, musical notes. So basically there were those musical notes and based on these musical notes, he found a similar pattern in elements when they were arranged in a particular way. So let's see how. What did he do? Newlands, his name is John Newlands, okay? So Newlands took elements and he arranged them in increasing order of their atomic mass. That is from the smallest, uh, the atom, that is the lightest element to the heaviest element, right? So he arranged them in uh, increasing order of their atomic masses. So, for example, let us take some elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So how many are there? Six, seven, uh, sorry, three, six, nine, ten, eleven. So suppose eleven. Okay, then we don't need ten, nine, and then eight. So H till H we need. Okay, we need just eight. So he arranged them in increasing order. So these are suppose the elements, some elements, okay? So he took these elements and he arranged them in increasing order of their atomic mass. So he took these elements and he arranged them. So suppose it's like this A, then B, then C, then D, then E, then F, then G. So these are seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Then in the next line, he again started with H, right? He again started with H. So in this way, he noticed one thing. When he arranged elements in increasing order of their atomic mass, the eighth element, so here you can say this is the eighth element, the eighth element repeated the properties of the first element. Okay? So the eighth element repeated the properties of the first element okay so basically okay, let me write this eight here sorry for that so the eighth element repeated the properties of the first element when elements were put in increasing order of their atomic mass right and you know if you compare this to the notes of music right now let me take the hindi notes because since this is an indian course you will be more familiar with that because there is an english note also I mean, the english form of uh, you know musical notes so that is do re mi pa so ne tina something like that but since we are indian students so we are you know better off with sare ga ma pa so basically what did he do he compared this with the musical notes although he used the english notes i'm going to use the hindi notes pretty much same thing so you know the hindi notes are sa Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni. Again, then what happens? Then again we have Sa. So you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, then 8. Right? So you know that the 8th note, the 8th note is the same as the 1st note. Now you can see that, right? They are the same. Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni, Sa. Sa is the eighth note and Sa is also the first note. 
so you can see that they are the same the first and the eighth note are the same so comparing this to the musical notes comparing this eighth element repetitive property to the first element with the musical notes new lands formed a law which he calls law of octaves octave means group of eight and the law states that this is the exact wording of the law okay, let me give you the exact wording of the law that when elements when elements are arranged when elements are arranged in increasing order of their masses increasing order of their masses of their masses okay the eighth element the eighth element repeats the properties repeats the properties of the first element of the first element just like just like the eighth note of music the eighth note of music is similar to the first note is similar to the first note so this was what we called newland's law of octaves that when elements are arranged in increasing order of their masses the eighth element repeats the properties of the first element just like the eighth note of music repeats the prop uh, is similar to the first note so you know sa is first here and sa is also the eighth element so you see they are the same note right so comparing the element repetitive property with musical notes he formed the law of octaves right so this was newland's law of octaves let's take an example to understand it with real elements so for example okay if you take the uh, if you take uh, elements uh, let's start from our normal uh, you know this thing so if you have lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine that time noble gases were not discovered so we are not going to consider new neon and after fluorine we came to sodium and then mag sodium magnesium and then blah 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 aluminium so on so you can see here that lithium and sodium lithium and sodium they all have same properties same properties lithium and sodium have the same properties one example is that they have the same number of valence electrons that is one same is the case with beryllium and magnesium again same properties right so in this way you can see that if you take lithium as the first element sodium will come out to be the eighth element so the first and eighth element have the same properties similarly if you take beryllium as the first element then magnesium will be your eighth element and again beryllium and magnesium have the same properties example is same number of valence electrons right beryllium has two magnesium also has two valence electrons that is electrons in the outermost shell of the atom lithium again one valence electron sodium 2 has one valence electron right so this is an example to explain newland's law of octaves i hope that's absolutely clear now i hope you are clear with this law right i hope you're clear with the concept of the law and this was a very beautiful concept because again it formed a foundation material for the formation of the modern periodic table and even mendeleev's periodic table right so i hope this is absolutely clear to each and every one of you right so again this was a very good attempt but again the drawbacks were there which we must consider because of which this was pretty much you know rejected so the drawbacks of this classification now there are main three drawbacks given in your textbook okay the first drawback is that many elements were not discovered at the time okay now for example noble gases were not discovered so when noble gases when noble gases and other elements were discovered when noble gases and other elements were discovered
द एर्थ एलिमेंट रूल फेल्ड द एर्थ एलिमेंट रूल फेल्ड ओके हाउ लेट्स टेक दिस एग्जांपल स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड दिस वन नाउ यू नो दैट यू नो after the noble gases were discovered what would be the next element after fluorine it would not be sodium it would be neon right so what would happen since neon is the next element after fluorine sodium becomes the ninth element not the eighth element so if you see neon becomes the eighth element and you can see lithium is a metal and it is reactive whereas neon is a noble gas and is completely fulfilled shells has completely fulfilled shells and is non reactive so obviously you can say that they have no similar properties right same as the case you know after magnesium aluminum uh, sorry magnesium then you have aluminum then you have silicon then phosphorus then sulfur then chlorine then argon argon becomes the eighth element with respect to the sodium so do sodium and argon have the same properties no because sodium is again a metal whereas argon is a non metal a noble gas right again unreactive so if you see they again don't have similar chemical properties so after the discovery of noble gases and other kinds of elements this eighth element rule failed because the eighth element no longer had the similar properties as the first element hence this was one reason due to which his classification was rejected right So I hope that's absolutely clear to you about this is the first and foremost drawback, right? Second drawback, even if the uh, elements were not discovered, right? It was seen that the octave rule, the octave rule only applied, the octave rule only applied up to lighter elements, up to lighter elements. that is till calcium so they only applied till calcium after calcium this rule stopped applying right it was no longer uh, the case that the eighth element repeated the properties of the first that rule stopped working after the discover uh, after uh, after calcium after lighter elements right because after calcium we get a Gets slightly heavier, slightly heavier elements, right? So after calcium, that is still atomic number twenty, it applied, but after calcium, it stopped applying. Okay, again a major drawback, and the third drawback, which again added up to this and finally led to the rejection rejection of this classification, was a one very very obvious reason and one very unacceptable reason. Okay, in his classification. in his classification newlands placed dissimilar elements dissimilar elements together placed dissimilar elements together right let's try to understand if you look into the classification of newlands right the whole table you will see that after a point you know he has made eighth eighth element groups right that you know because he formed groups like this of the eighth eighth element right and these were called groups okay they were called groups when he formed these rows okay columns of you know eighth eighth elements with respect to eighth element eighth element eighth element then he formed groups right so in these columns or groups he placed some dissimilar elements for example one very very prominent example sulfur right sulfur he took this is sulfur okay and it is a non metal everyone knows that right so sulfur non metal okay after sulfur well before this was oxygen after oxygen came sulfur and after sulfur you won't believe what did newland do newlands put the element iron he put the element iron and you know iron is clearly a metal not a non metal iron is a metal not a non metal so he put iron sulfur and oxygen in the same group 
he put iron, sulfur and oxygen in the same group. Therefore, he is trying to say that iron, a metal, has the similar properties to that of sulfur, which is a non-metal. So, he placed a metal iron with a non-metal sulfur. A big blunder. Because iron and sulfur do not have similar properties. Iron is a metal, it loses electrons. Sulfur is a non-metal, it gains electrons. Right? That's pretty obvious. So, again, a very big blunder which he made. He placed these similar elements together in the same group. So, sulfur and iron in the same group. Well, no proper chemist would do that. And obviously, he did not think of that, right, did he? So, again, that was a major drawback of his classification. So, these are the three drawbacks of Newland's classification, although it played a prominent role in, you know, again, driving the force behind classification and, you know, brought about an idea because this eighth element property is now somewhat present in our modern periodic table as well. So, it did, you know, form another basis for the modern periodic table to really, you know, be present in its present form. But still, one thing is to be noted that it had its drawbacks and ultimately it was rejected. So this was what we called Newland's Law of Octaves and Newland's Classification.